It's John and Mike, BrewDashDudes.com. We have three different beers in front of us, and it's another great kind of experiment comparison, as I did many moons ago with uh, taking some flaked grains and trying to understand what they brought to a beer in terms of mouthfeel and or body. Mike is going uh, another direction. He is also using flaked grains, flaked adjunct. But uh, in this realm, he's trying to actually lighten the body and uh, mouthfeel of his beer. So I'm going to let him talk about them. But I think what he did for us right away is that he, he needed the control. We needed a beer that was all malt and then two uh, experimental beers right next to it, right? Right on. OK, cool. So what it, tell us what this is, the control. OK, so the control is just um, 100% Two row pale malt, and it's uh, Bryce Brewer's best malt. So oh. it's like two love one one point eight something love a bond. It's just Brewer's uh, Brewer's malt. So two row pale malt. Um, you know, I brew a lot of cream ale and stuff like that. So I wanted to handle this into the the experiment with the lightning stuff. So um, the middle beer is ten percent flaked corn, and then the one on the far right, when you get to it, is ten percent flaked rice. I normalized the gravity, so they all start at the same original gravity. Um, this is a half batch, so what I did is my brew in a bag half batch uh, recipe, basically I can squeeze five pounds of grain in it. So what I did is I did four and a half pounds of base malt and half a pound of um, corn or rice, um, which is about 10% of the grist, right? Sure. So, and, um, and I, I just think, interestingly, there was supposed to be a fourth beer in this recipe. Oopsie. Which would have been base malt with table sugar. Oh. <laughs> but as a, as a way of like really like, how does just like nothing yeah. lighten it? But um, I was doing this as trying to no boil, and I got a little um, carried away, and I poured that one into um, a three gallon better bottle while it was still a little bit too warm and the bottle like it held <laughs> but it was not happy the way it was shaped afterwards so i just sort of said that's well not, we're not going to yeah. ferment and drink that one we'll just <laughs> i think that's still in my garage i should have brought it out of here but um but anyway this is the main experiment base malt flaked corn flaked rice and so what's the hops you're using for this beer these beers same? so in this beer everybody got the same it's it's 30 ibus of nugget nugget Okay. Uh, only because I've got plenty of nugget and being in there for the full boil. Um, so these boil for about 45 minutes. I didn't bother going for the full 60. Um, I think partially, when I do the small batch, that boil can be so vigorous yeah. uh, in a smaller, wider pot that any of those TM DMS types of things, you can boil pretty hard, pretty quickly. But also being a slightly less boil, if you are going to get any of that weird stuff, um, especially from the corn guy, maybe you'd pick it out. Got so uh, that okay. was sort of by design. And then the yeast, um, I had done all these beers and pitched the yeast at the same time for each one of these. And so I made a rehydrated slurry of two packs of USO5 that I evenly distributed into the three fermenters. Again, there were three gallon fermenters with about two and a half gallons of each beer into them. So, okay. so when you said you poured, when you poured in the two hot wort into um, that uh, better bottle. You said it was a no boil. You meant no chill. You didn't no, no chill. chill. Did I say no boil? You said no boil. But so I meant no chill because yeah. the, the thing is for no chill, um, I like doing no chill when it's super cold out there because mm. I don't want to bring out the chiller and the hose and, and all stuff that. like that. Yep. But um, I'll brew beers that really only need a 60 minute addition of hops um, and just cover the pot, let it go overnight and it chills down just fine. But with these, because I'm trying to do so many, I needed to like get one out of the pots. <laughs> yeah. And so the sugar one I had put in a pot in, in, in a fermenter rather, and it just sort of like, yeah, was the like, plastic I'm couldn't handle trying it. to hold <laughs> integrity. But um, it was too warm. Yes. So what are you trying to get out of this particular experiment? Is it, is it a taste factor? Is it just uh, understanding the differences between rice and corn in terms of body? Well, I've all? never really brewed with flaked rice. Yeah. So I'm one, curious about the difference between having flaked rice versus flaked corn um, as an adjunct in, in, a, in trying to make a really light ale. But also, you know, what properties does 
how do these actually differ from base malt? Like how much lightning and flavor does actually occur? Yeah. Uh, from a malt perspective, because I make a lot of cream ale, but I'm not like making, say, a lot of American blonde ale with the same, uh, you know, uh, specific characteristics or uh, parameters um, to compare those things side by side. Got it. So very similar to what you're trying to do with the flake barley, oats, and stuff, and go the, the more that creaminess route. Does one give more creaminess than the other? Sure. This is sort of like the other way. Yeah. Do I get a lightning? And yeah. also, do I? I like. I would. This I would. I'm wondering like what the aroma is going to be, and also the flavor that. Yeah. Even the 10 percent of the of the uh, the grain bill. Yeah. What does that bring? Yeah. Hmm. Well. So what do you get? Well, I can tell you that. It is a remarkable difference in just the aroma of the uh, the base beer, the yep. the uh, control. Yep. You know, just the doughy, you know, bready nose that uh, an all malt beer has. Yep. As compared to the other yeah. two. Um, hmm. And even though this is, you know, a light beer in its its own uh, yeah. respects. Yeah. The other two are are even lighter. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Like. This on its own would be a perfectly good like lawnmower beer, mm. um, and so I'll get a picture with a with a camera later of the three side by side, uh, just so it's easier to see side by side. But um, in in terms of the two beers here, yep, um, there's just slight difference in terms of characteristics. I would say that the the body and the mouthfeel of both of them are are fairly similar. I don't think that there's a huge difference? I, I don't think so either in terms of the, like their lightness. Mm. Um, That's what I mean. On the aroma, there's difference in flavors and aroma that I want you to talk about. For some reason, in the corn, yeah, in the corn one, I get there's something is just a a hair more floral yeah. than in the rice one. And I wonder if it's just has to do with, remember, thinking like the whole picture here, if it's letting just a little bit of that hop character be more present than the rice one. The rice one, aroma-wise, there's like, there's nothing. <laughs> it's like yeah. really nothing. It's clean. I mean, in, in comparison to the base beer too, the base beer, it, there's a malt presence there, just 10% mm. difference. Yep. Um, the rice one, there is almost no aroma coming out of that. Almost none. Almost none. Um, yeah. If if there is an aroma there, it is like a very clean aroma. That's if exactly. that's a type of if that's what use, it is, right? yes. Um, there isn't a lot of distinct uh, notes of anything <laughs> coming off of that yeah. outside of like I'm getting probably yeah a little bit you of malt. Made, but you made reference it. to um, the rice one, like there there is a, a strange like zippy Budweiser like quality to it. Yeah. Which is strange, right? Yep. Um, the corn one I, I find more pleasing, but it's probably because of all the years of drinking cream ale, my brain is telling me, yeah, that's the one you want to drink, <laughs> right? Um, but the but there is a, I find like the corn one has a softer malt presence than the base does. It's, it's just lightened yes. and softened. In comparison to the rice one where it's just more... There isn't much to it. There isn't much to it. And it's funny. You you would think that the... Um, it's warming up a little bit more. It's a little... I'm getting a little more sweetness there with the rice one than I did on the corn one. Uh, I was really anticipating the corn one to actually have a little bit of more like a sweetness factor to it, uh, per se. Yep. But, um, I'm getting more g grainy characteristics from that corn, the flaked maize one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. There's just a little, there's a character in it. Yep. A but little, the, yeah. But it's weird to say that way because when you compare it back to the base, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. it's not it's no. not as complex as the base. Mm -hmm. It's not as rich as the base. Not to say that just base mod alone is, is rich, but in, comp in this comparison there is. So I don't know, I think what would be really cool would be to do something with rice again, maybe even bump it up to 15% total really? and use like noble hops okay. aroma wise and see if you can really get that that spicy, zippy, you know, American um, macro lager yeah. thing going. Yeah, I think you will be able to do that. One thing I always notice with those beers specifically it's like when you first crack open a Bud Light or a Coors Light or any one of the, pick your favorite beer, one of those favorite categories, 
the first few sips, it's like you get all of that American light lager category flavor. But then after that, it just turns into nothing, like <laughs> yeah. like beer, like just yeah. watery beer. Yeah. Like you lose that zip, your your palate immediately goes blind to it, and you're just sort of palate fatigued, if you will, mm -hmm. from a lack of of a, there's not enough boldness there to keep carrying you through the whole can. <laughs> yeah, you know, right? agreed, agreed. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? It's like all right, now it's I'm, I'm past like the honeymoon stage, and now we're in for the long haul of finishing this can. Yeah. So I don't know. I, this is pretty interesting. It is. I I do. I did do uh, bring up the uh, the color differences. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't seem like there's really much difference between the two experimental ones. I think those are pretty much the same color. Yep. yep. Um, and then in terms of the, the body and mouthfeel, as we talked about, there isn't much difference. There's just yep. slight differences yeah. in terms of the taste and aroma uh, between the maize and the rice. Yeah, I think, I wonder if like you went to 20% corn and rice, if then see, yeah. the corn would come out yeah. more than the rice yeah. um, per se. But at 10%, it's pretty even. I could probably make my classic cream ale recipe with 10% rice and might you, you might not really mm. miss it unless mm. it was side by side. Mm, true. Yeah, so I think like the big takeaways for me is that just even with 10% of the grain bill being one of these uh, ad flaked adjuncts that are, are uh, provided to you mm. to lighten your beer, um, it makes a world of difference, I yep. think. That's for sure. Um, it would have been interesting to see like what the 10%, you know, just... Uh, table sugar one would have brought yeah but you know no matter i think we have enough here to, to to gather some information about it that when you when you if you're going to choose between flaked corn or maize and flaked rice that um the the outcoming beer are pretty much going to be the similar and i think it comes down to your preference in you know it being rice or corn you know mm -hmm. um i think that uh, the resulting beer in terms of its body uh, is going to be pretty much the same if you use either of them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's cool that uh, you know. I think that you know, as you uh, iterate on the cream ale thing, and I know that eventually weather will get warm around here. Um, you know, I think that it would be nice to see. Try this. Um, I don't know if you. I'd, I'd love to keep you at like just ten percent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like fifteen. Yeah, you, know, like just... you know what I think? Maybe come summertime, I'll brew something like noble hops, a bunch of sods and rice and just uh, I'm inspired to maybe want to do like a, an American lager yeah. and just go for it and get like actually do lager yeast to really suppress down what little esters there are sure. here from the US sure. so cool it's cool the other thing too just one last thing to note yeah which is ridiculous when you think about adding these adjuncts look at the lacing on all six of these glasses <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Like when we, pour, right before we started the camera and I poured really them, like, the, heads. The, it was like a scoop of ice cream on top of every single yeah. one. The, I, don't, I don't know what I did right or what I did wrong, but um, maybe no chill is the way to go for head retention. <laughs> but um, it's pretty, it's, the lacing is pretty amazing. And even now it's collapsed down, there's still foam on the surface yep. Yep. in the rice and the corn. <sighs> um, I don't know, man. Uh, you might be onto something. Might be I don't know. Something. Maybe all those, yeah. maybe like, you know, millions of beer drinkers, you know. Could be right. I don't All right. Know, or something. NASCAR, let's go. <laughs> so anyway, uh, great experiment. Thanks for bringing this to our attention. Hopefully you learned something from it too. Um, not that uh, maybe you've, you know, you have brewed with these types of adjuncts. If not, you know, maybe you learned something and it inspires you to brew with them. Especially if you're looking for lighter styles or just trying to get something that's lighter. Because I think that as, you know, in my early days of home brewing, it was always like, gee, even with like 100% malt, just never seems as, as uh, light or as crisp as, yeah. as I want it to be. And like, yep. again, I was brewing ale, so that also added to that, that, that perception that I uh, wasn't able to uh, brew crisp styles. But if you have the ability to brew lagers and you want to experiment with these adjuncts, I say go for it. Yeah, you'll be pleasantly surprised with the outcome. If you like this uh, video, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel because we try to do this thing every single week for John and Mike, brew-dudes.com. Uh, brew on. Cheers. <laughs>